Okay. Does this sum up the feeling that anybody might have in this room? <laughs> Possibly? Yeah? Good. All right. Good. Now, I, this is a, a, a seminar, but, you know, I'm not a professional speaker. Um, my dad's a preacher. My dad's dad's a preacher. And on my mom's side, my great-grandfather's a preacher. So I do come from a long line. Yeah, so if you feel your head nodding and falling asleep, that's, <laughs> it's probably the genetic, the genetic link. But, you know, I kind of like to have an, an interactive, laid-back talk. I don't want to be didactic. I don't want to be boring. So, you know, feel free to to uh, raise your hand and do whatever you want as we go through this. So out of order, that's the way a lot of my patients feel. They feel, the word I've heard many patients talk about is being unplugged. It's just like, I just feel like unplugged. And p my family around me, they don't understand. They say, oh, come on, let's get up, let's go, let's go. You know, you look fine. But they feel unplugged. And I, I'm sure that a lot of people share that. Now, what we're going to talk about today is really based on the work of Dr. Datis Karazian. This guy is, is a genius. Uh, he's, in my opinion, the foremost leader in thyroid research. And uh, we have his book. You may have seen it when you walked in, a little stack of them. We'll talk about how you can get them at the end of the presentation. But if you have not read that book, you need to go get it. If you have thyroid issues, hyper or hypo, you should, you should go get it. Uh, and it is, it is awesome. So in this book are over 700 references, medical references, as to what I'm going to talk about today. So what I talk about today is not my opinion. This is all based off of medical research. And when I say medical research, I'm not talking about chiropractic journals and natural medicine journals. Some of them are natural medicine journals, but many of them are from the British Medical Journal, Journal of the American Medical Association. There are studies that are done by medical doctors and natural doctors that are published that is not really being read. I have a whole handout on that as well, and it's, it's ridiculous. So with the things you hear me talk about tonight, most of which are not my opinion. If it is my opinion, I will, I'll state that. Okay? So get that book. It'll, it, it'll really change your life. And we're going to base our talk off of his research. Okay, so a thyroid gland. What is it responsible for? What does it do? How many cells do you think, what percentage of your cells have receptors for thyroid hormone? Anybody want to be brave? 100%. Every single one. Good. There you go. Brave people in the front row. Yeah, 100%. Every single cell and tissue in your body has receptors for thyroid hormone. So as we go through this list, I'm not going to really bore you too much with reading it, but you know, there's a lot of different things in here. You know, your bones, your GI function, liver function, gallbladder, your body composition, your blood sugar regulation, so diabetes and things like that. Cholesterol is a big one. So sometimes people with a hypothyroidism have high cholesterol and then they go on these other medications to fix their cholesterol when it's really the thyroid that caused this to happen. Uh, stress hormones, detoxification, stomach acid balance, that's probably a problem for a lot of people. Right? I'm sure probably at least 20% of people in here are having stomach issues. Uh, thermal regulation, you know what that means? Yeah. Cold, right? You notice how warm, the, the room it was warm when we walked in. Um, and we like to keep it warm for the hypothyroid patients, but uh, you know, it, is, it feels kind of normal to me now. Is anybody here cold? I see you like this. <laughs> Just your hands? Okay. Uh, fertility, inflammation levels, and, and sex hormone balance. Okay? Yeah. So every cell, any, any symptom that you're having, can possibly be due to your thyroid being out of whack. Okay? And that's why when I see 10 different thyroid patients who come in one after the other, some of their symptoms may cross-relate, but some of them might be very, very different. Okay? So every single person that's in here needs to be treated as an individual. You have your own metabolism, you have your own genetics, um, and you need to be treated differently than all the other 10 patients that are going to come in. Does that make sense? That's what we deal with in functional medicine, you know, and we'll talk about that as we go through this. Okay, so the handout. Everybody have a handout? Probably do, except for me. Can I have one of those handouts again? Let's forget to have one of those. Okay, so take out that blue fancy handout with the brains on top. Thanks. Now, the only reason you have this in handout form is because I didn't, couldn't figure out how to get this onto the, <laughs> up there. All right, so uh, at the top, we're going to go through this. You see the hypothalamus, okay? That's part of the brain. And that's going to um, secrete TRH, which will stimulate the pituitary gland, which is right under it, to secrete TSH. Has anybody ever heard of TSH? I'm sure a lot of you have hypothyroidism. I've heard of that before. Right? That's like the magic word. All right. So once the, the TSH has been secreted, now we have the thyroid itself that's going to create thyroid hormone. It's going to be asked to create thyroid hormone. Now, as you can see in this picture, there's T4 and there's T3. Look at the percentage of T4. 93% that is made is T4. 7% is T3. Can you guess which one is the active form of thyroid hormone? At risk of sounding foolish. T4. 
P3 is the active form of thyroid hormone. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? So here's the thing. If we are not getting enough T3 into our cells, then we're going to have thyroid symptoms, hypothyroid symptoms. That's the key, all right? And that's really the whole basis of our talk today and why you're out here, okay? So it makes 93% of T4 and 7% is T3. And from there, we have to now convert T4 over to T3. Now, the reason why the body does this, uh, I believe, is because it's, a, it's such a, a strong hormone. When we have hyperthyroidism, that's a very dangerous condition where the heart beats out of the chest, and many people have eye issues with that as well. Uh, so if there's too much thyroid hormone, it's very, very dangerous. So the body realizes that and has a little conversion process that can keep it safe. Okay? So at that 93% of T4, 60% of that 93%, stay with me here, is going to be converted in the liver. 20% is going to go into what's called reverse T3. Reverse T3 is inactive. Okay? Doesn't, it's not usable and again another buffering system for the body. The other 20% is in the peripheral tissues and the GI system, the gut. Okay? That's where all that conversion happens. Has anybody ever heard this before? No? Okay, good. Isn't this important to know? Mm -hmm. Alright, as a little side note, you know what uh, Synthroid is? Mm -hmm. T4. T4. Okay. All right. So just to go one step further, uh, you seem like an advanced class here. Um, <laughs> the, the way that TSH is is um, has a feedback loop from is actually from T4. So T4 gives the feedback up to the pituitary to stop asking for TSH. Okay. So that's going to be important in a little bit. So you can I should probably draw an arrow up there, but that's where the feedback loop happens. Okay. So people might be getting this already, where we're coming from. So again, T3 is the usable part, but T4 is the part that's giving the body the feedback as to keep that TSH normal. You with me? No? Yes? All right. Well, we're gonna, it'll be crystal clear by the time we're done. Okay, so now you folks know more than most people out there in, uh, I'd say 99% of people who have hypothyroidism, you know more than they do. Okay, so take that home with you. Read it, study it, know it. Okay, we'll go over some of the symptoms. Mm -hmm. So what symptoms does this look like? Fatigue. Working too much. Fatigue, yeah, or working too much if you don't have hypothyroidism, yeah. Uh, fatigue, how many people have fatigue? Raise your hand if you have it. Okay, good. Now we're talking about real fatigue that, that really ranges from mild to really severe debilitating fatigue that people who don't have fatigue don't understand. And imagine if you had work to do, if you had to keep the house going and have a job and have kids and feel unplugged. Horrible. Can you make out that picture? Oh, yeah. What is that? It's a chair. <laughs> you can see the chair. Wow. <laughs> it's, uh, it's actually weight gain and weight symptoms. You know? And if you are somebody who is trying to eat the right things, maybe, maybe trying to exercise and still not losing weight and frustrated when you look over at your neighbor who's putting down hamburgers and eating, you know, drinking soda and they're skinny as a rail. And you're like, come on. What's wrong with me? Well, it could be your thyroid. Your thyroid is like your engine for your car and if it revs high it's hyperthyroid and most people are really skinny with that. If it revs low some people are, are going to have weight gain. About 50% of people are going to have uh, the weight gain. Some of them are not. You'll see some people with, with uh, thyroid, hypothyroidism that are, that are thin as well. Okay, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Headaches. These are headaches that usually start in the morning and then they gradually wear off as the day goes by. Does that describe anybody's headache? Some people there? Okay, good. Sometimes? As you drink down the coffee. <laughs> All right. How about this? Can you make out what this picture is? She's frustrated with the husband. <laughs> this is her, not her husband. Yeah. That's her. That's her psychiatrist. Yeah. Psychologist, psychiatrist. Who knows? But she's depressed, right? Having a hard time trying to get trying to get that fixed. Now, depression is, you know, sometimes people say, "Hey, I don't feel like myself. I haven't felt like myself in 15 years." What's wrong with me? And then maybe you're on, you know, Zoloft or Paxil or one of these other things when it's really the thyroid that's causing that, um, that condition. How about this? I love this picture. I hate to feel like that, but yeah, constipation. Right? That's a that's a big one. Hair loss. Hair loss is a really, you know, I would say the the order of of uh, symptom relief that people usually want when they come in my office. First one is is weight. Second one is fatigue, and third one is hair loss usually in that order, but everybody's a little bit different. Now again, you don't have to have all of these symptoms. You may have one or two, you may have no symptoms, okay? Yeah, the, uh, this is myxedema, so we have some issues there. That's really severe myxedema. Cold intolerance, we talked about that just before. And infertility, 
So this lady's, you know, they're, they're trying to conceive and, and they can't. There's a lot of undiagnosed hypothyroidism out there as well, and we'll get into that where the labs look normal. Remember that book title we told you? Why do I still have thyroid symptoms when my labs are normal? They have normal labs, but their thyroid is still not working well. So we deal with some infertility in our office as well, and oftentimes the thyroid is the issue. Fix the thyroid and, wow, we're having, we're having kids again. Okay, hyperthyroid symptoms. Now we're going to talk about these for a few seconds. Um, heart palpitations, inward trembling, increased pulse rate, nervousness, night sweats, and difficulty gaining weight. Has anybody here, by show of hands, ever had those symptoms? <laughs> Only one? I'll bet you more. <laughs> some of those. Okay. And we'll talk about why some other people with hypothyroidism are having some of these symptoms. Okay? Uh, I, would, I would bet it's probably at least 80% of people who are in here have had some of these symptoms as well. Now, a question on the bottom, difficult gaining weight. Right. But I've read that uh, increase in appetite you eat more and you're going to gain weight. It can counteract it. Yeah. That's me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, people are thirsty and hungry and just, e yeah, instead, yeah. Uh, that can be the case. Yeah, so these are just general. doesn't mean you, all ha you have to have all the symptoms and it's rare for a person to have all of them. Uh, but I'm, I'm positive that people are having some of them. Okay, so